the oil production in Nigeria will no longer be about how much Nigeria is producing a day anymore. It's going to be about how much of Nigeria crude oil is going into debt repayments. And you know, when you are paying debt, you don't expect payment. No. They are selling this future. And we are here trying to see who is the most beautiful girl in what tribe in Nigeria? Which tribe cook the best food? Who is the owner of this type of a cloth? Eh? You are here. Every day, some of them have become tribal champions, participating in the the tribal ethnic Olympics. Why their future and the future of their own children yet unborn have been mortgaged. And they are not angry. Isn't that the twist? One year, eh, you already have like over 200 million barrels of Nigeria crude oil. Future of oil prospecting. That will be used to pay debt. The debt that none of you can talk can tell me what is the impact of that 3.3 billion in your economy now? Anybody? Anyone? Because if you want to see, if you look at me and say, I don't wish Nigeria well, you face me right now in front of this your screen. I want you to tell me one significant thing that you can point out in Nigeria that you will say that $3.3 billion went into in your economy. One thing. Now you're going to get another $2 billion. It's going to be gone. And you will pay back. This time, you will be paying back with your resources. You don't need your money anymore. Sifnubu is leading you to that path. Instead of you servicing debt, why not just take our resources to pay for it? We borrowed 3.3 billion. We were to pay back 5.5 billion. That ridiculous interest rate in five years. Eh? But we are giving you a collateral of a $12.5 billion so that you can sell the crude oil. Remove your 5.5 billion. Eh? Remove your commission and give us the rest. This is the deal Tifnumbu is signing up for you. Like your Samoa and the rest of them. You see, it is not. It is not about the. It is not about them having to wait for Nigeria to make money before they steal it anymore. They are actually like selling and selling your resources and collecting the cash now. Why some of you are still deluded that uh, you have crude oil, you have this all over Nigeria. It is a serious. Uh, Mineral, mineral resources uh, looting going on. Never seen before. No country can survive that. No country ever will survive this. None. Nigeria will never survive this too. And there's no amount of prayer that can change that too. No. You're going to be reading about them in the papers. You're going to be reading them about, I'm reading about them online. And you're going to be wondering what the hell is going on. If you don't stop them, they won't stop. Never. They won't. So, uh, you remember this uh, uh, guy? Let me go check uh, that other name again out. Okay. Because I need to mention the name properly. This is a guy, Obia, Obia Rary. I think it's Obia Rary. That's his name. Uh, I kind of would like to call him Unemeka. He's the guy who kind of. Prompt and then uh, th those feature on uh, arise, mostly talking about uh, you know economy and how the economy could be revived, how it could be helped. In fact, how this uh, issue of uh, Fulani terrorism, uh, you know, the reduction in it could really help Nigeria could grow our own food and all that stuff, right? He has a greenhouse. He started out. I've been following him. Okay, he started a greenhouse. Uh, where they were growing their own uh, food in sacks and all that. Greenhouse is when you kind of have to build a bit of a shed. You know what I mean, right? So he shared a video 
you shared a video on uh, the growth of part of uh, that is green us, you know, kind of encouraging, uh, you know, farming in a way that you could still pretty much like produce a lot that you could sell or even share. And I like this. I want to share that with you. This is different from them asking you to put a sack on this like the fence of your house. This one is like a, a greenhouse sector of farming. And it's, I've been told there are many in Nigeria now. Okay. Okay, so we are double, double staking the plants already uh, because the bell pepper have started gaining weight. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's putting strain on the plant. So this is the reason why we double stick, double the staking so that they can remain erect. They can keep standing erect. So we already started doing that for this first greenhouse. And then the fruits are, we're having more fruits have... We have more fruits growing. Look at this one now. But this very plant has about four mature ones. Have a good number of them. See, this is another one. That has so we have have them growing massively. have them they are all growing um, fruits already so has a progress with this uh, this uh, first greenhouse okay so where do be that's some work so imagine if you have a if you have a, maybe a plot or two plots of land and you could just go kind of uh, build yourself that type of a greenhouse it's really good right and you could have a controlled uh farming as well and you could grow anything it's a lot of work it's a lot of uh bagging and all of that but it can really really be uh rewarding did you see that room there you know especially if you have suffered from the end of uh, the fulani uh terrorists destroying uh millions of naira invested in uh, this uh, farming and all that okay it's just an advice so it just didn't look like, uh, you know, me, if I see something, I'm going to share, right? So I saw that and I thought, okay, I'm going to share that. And I know some of you probably have seen stuff like that. So you can look them online too. I'm serious. You can look them up online. If you have the capital, uh, you know, that you can use to set such up, I've been told is really, really rewarding, right? And you could do that all year round to grow anything i believe so thank you so much um, everyone so we have uh, two options let me see the time um i have one okay so we have uh, two options right to read our white malice order okay remember we we stopped sorry we we stopped at uh, chapter 17 right so we have a uh, Chapter 18, which to me will be a bit of a long read. Oh, it's quite a long read. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty pages. That would take us more than half an hour to read. Right? So would you want me to kind of uh, use half an hour to jump forward again on this uh, reading? Or we should just go straight and take calls. See reactions to what we have shared. I'm already like uh, receiving uh, calls, right? So I, I'm just going to then probably just uh, take calls, okay? Well, let's first take a break. Yes, sir. I'll take a break, okay? And when I get back, I, I will. Okay, I'm gone. Right, the African Wala. You want us to read a bit, right? So this can take us uh, another thirty to forty minutes. You up for that, right? Okay. Normally, I'm supposed to decide uh, before asking you, but sometimes I feel like asking you means that uh, we are all on the same page, right? 
So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to, you see, so I'm going to take a break still. I'm going to take a break. So when I get back, I'll come and take uh, the poll and see how many of us want us to read now or just have uh, an open chat as well, right? I'll come back and check that out. Meanwhile, to every one of you who are uh, going to, to everyone who might want to uh, use that, my link, buy me a coffee as usual, right? I'm going to drop the link in the comments uh, after the break or during the break while I'm coming back. Don't go anywhere yet. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, everyone. I think uh, we're just going to have to take uh, calls, okay? I know. We have, uh, see, listen, we still have so much of uh, books to still read here, right? So look at this. We have uh, a, a tropical dependency, an outline of the ancient history of the Western Sudan with an account of the modern uh, settlement of northern Nigeria, right? So we have that, a single four. And this one is from Flora Shaw. Okay, one cycle. We have this, the destruction of black civilization, right? Great issues of a race from 4,500 BC to 2,000 AD, 2000 AD. So we see how that. And then uh, we have our white malis loaded, okay? Even the jungle, David Hunter is a jungle, the jungle. We have that too. So I just want you all to know that the reading on this platform is because of uh, people's uh, requests. It's on special requests where people want to sit down and sort of uh, listen to some of these historical accounts. So I just want you to remember that too. It won't be always be like uh, straight to the cause, okay? But I hope uh, maybe next time anyway. I'm going to start early enough so that we we'll have space to read. Hello there. Hello, Mr. Maegu. Hello, sir. Baba. This is Adiola from Netherlands. Sorry. Adiola from Netherlands. How are you yes. doing today, sir? I'm good, so... Uh, I was listening to what you've been saying, you know, uh, regarding this uh, Toya Marcos uh, case. My dad, sure. you know? <laughs> the thing she started, is, once she started saying, "I want to die," once she started crying, that will now make us look away from. Why would you use police to arrest somebody's mom? Come on, man. Yes, exactly. You know, why would you even use police to arrest somebody you are trolling yourself online, right? Somebody you yeah, yeah. to. Somebody will be saying, "I don't abuse myself." 
let's say make me and you they abuse ourselves now, right? Then the next thing mm -hmm. I don't go pick your mama. I say, What? Yeah, that's the brother that that sorry, that's their hand. Then he turn, he turned it around <laughs> to eh, because I supported Tinubu. Is it because is it my part? Is it come on, shut up, man? Baba. That is their aim and their objective of supporting, you know, APC. You understand? Mm. People like um Eniola and, and you know that one as well. That's their major aim. Even if they don't have anything to gain from the government, but they just want to have that connection such that you know if you can't beat them, you join them so that you can as well just take your phone call and say, ah, I know she eating um oh, this yeah. person, I know him so no more. You don't understand. I will call them. They will carry you. They will teach your fuck up. That is the Nigerian system. You understand? It's, yeah. it's just a way of having connection with uh, Agbe rules. You know, people that rule Lagos to show that ah, I know person. You understand? Yeah, and that is what she has to do. Now, they will deal with you. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly my point. So that's that's the whole point. So it, it, you you think that oh they are supporting you know, because of yes yeah, that democratic right, but no deep down I know that they are not doing it because you know they are just doing it just for that connection, just to you know be part of the system so that you can oppress your federal guy tomorrow when you need them to. It's the same thing. I don't want to go to VDM at the moment, but, you know, they just keep it strictly. Uh, on well, you can. You know? I mean, uh, I've, seen one, I've seen that one uh, responding to David. And I've yeah, seen people yeah. kind of like uh, dragging themselves. And I'm like, uh, man, I like the guy. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I do. I like people who have... Uh, you know, I like people who kind of uh, still stand for something. But there is also a bit of him that is uh, really dark. I mean, where he's used his platform to actually support the oppressors a few times too, right? But when I saw people kind yeah. of responding to them like an issue online, I was like, okay. So it's a big thing there. <laughs> yeah. So you just see, brother, I, how this thing works, uh, I me, I don't know if it's a gift, but I clearly understand how people roll. I, I, I know how people think. Mm. What he does is is not different from what Tunde Ednot does. Tunde Ednot also is, is also using a similar approach. Okay. He made his followers from giveaway. You do giveaway, and then you cover all your wrongdoings so that people, people will fight for you regardless. It's the same strategy Tinubu uses. He helps the people. He helps the likes of Emsolom or Kokozaria and the rest of them so that when the election comes, they can always fight for him. Mm. You, and they hold, at that point, they hold, you, you know, they hold him, you know, their allegiance. At that point. There's nothing they can say. So it's the same strategy VDM uses, you understand? You know, you immediately recover one million from, from, from Ash Moshi, you understand? So that people can also say, ah, look at him. He has done well, a good thing. He actually did. <laughs> Yeah, he did. This, this is yeah. why me, I actually see things, okay, Baba? Like, uh, you can, I mean, you can talk about what he's done uh, in a way that you'll be like, come on, man. Then you've yeah. seen the one that he's done that you'll be like, uh, okay, he actually did that. Like, person that uh, his money was taken and wasn't given back, right? And he oh. managed to get that money back for that person. He won't feel the way you feel. You get what I mean now? But yeah. it's just that David called him an opportunist, and he's so right. Like he yeah. said, right, jumping into something, not because you want to, you want to help, sort of make people understand better, but it's just to help confuse them more. Exactly. And I've seen him do that a few times. Yeah, I've seen him do that a yeah. few times. Same thing. I, I told you on this program last. I said this guy is nothing but an opportunist and not really an activist. As you guys David, are David called him that. Is, yeah, he's an opportunity. That's what he, you know, he is like, he just utilize the whole issue. He turns the table around, spin it off. If you call for him, if you come for him, he then start mentioning how the Northerners have not been feeding. What concerns us with, with that? Like, it's yeah, your issue. Why do you call it? Oh, the Northerners don't worship. Northerners don't worship money. We don't worship money here, but we see you hanging around with the elites, like the richest people in town. You know, so I that's the story from that day. But I'm after Tony. 
Nobody is gaslighting you. Nobody is bullying you. You it's said no bullying. War. We are in a trolling war. <laughs> if you know so, cook, the, no yeah. attack it. The idea is we said no bullshit. That is what we are asking for. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what Tell if nobody tells you. You did just do all these stories, 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 stories. Just sit down and say, okay, this is what he told me. But if nobody <laughs> tell her anything, forget it. <laughs> but I will not be able to you know. So I don't know why these people just fall know. back. Let me let me oh, take another one. Eh? Thank yeah, you so much. Thank okay. You. <laughs> you have a, you have a good uh, a good morning. A lot of you are just like you know. I, I like the violence too, but sometimes I said something a while back. I said stop making uh, stop making foolish or stupid people popular. We are in the age of uh, the internet. You cannot describe who is going to be popular or who is not going to be. The universe sort of kind of do that on its own. It is the internet. Somebody that you think is nobody, no voice, can wake up tomorrow and the social media will change their personality forever. There are now people who speak to millions of people. You'll be like, oh, that's it. It's a voice. That's what social media does. And of course, we've had people who have had the opportunity, but they've misapplied them many times, okay? <clears throat> when we are discussing politics. It is because it affects everything. And you cannot trivialize it. So when you want to use your platform to speak about politics that affects the lives of the people, the politicians, the government, the ideal thing is for you to actually please know what you are talking about because it will be so sad for you to be passing on your ignorance to millions of those who probably follows you. And that's part of the problem we are facing right now. Making foolish people popular. Yeah. Hello. Hi, my ego. How are you? I am very well. Is that Ken? Yes, sir. How are you? <laughs> I am very good, man. It's been a while. And yourself, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Well, thank God. Thank you for your all that you do. <clears throat> uh, but let me go straight to two points very quickly. Won't bore you too much. The first one was uh, the uh, the lady. I'm trying to remember her name. The one you were talking about just now. Um, she how uh, uh, the Nigerian police. Uh, the Nigerian police when they want to pick up somebody instead of instead of trying to pick up uh, who they want they pick up the <laughs> so it had happened to me when we are those days when when I was in Nigeria with the uh, defense I uh, I got I got picked up myself uh by my neighbor the next door neighbor um so I actually went home. I didn't stay in the base. I actually went home. I didn't want to stay in the base that day. I said, okay, let me just go home and then uh, see my siblings. So I was home. Somebody parked in front of the gate of my house. And then uh, apparently was blocking the entrance, going in and coming out. So because the person didn't come, I left the notes on the windshield. The person... Still did not after almost like my after like almost two three hours. I'm like, okay, how on earth can somebody park in front of somebody's entrance, not knowing that this is somebody's entrance? So I now uh, put um, this kind of here, you know, this tire lock, this tire lock. I just put it in front just to see if this person who comes, I would like to have a, a word with this person. So the next time this person, guess what, my ego? Wow. Simply because. Tire lock. The tire lock didn't deflate the tire. I didn't do anything. No damage to the car. Nothing. Just to hold the person down there while I was waiting. When the person came, I had a chat with the person. I saw how rude she was. And um, I just felt like it was irrelevant. I removed the tire lock. I said, ma'am, the only reason why I put this tire lock because I know you're complaining. is because I needed you to see how bad where you park and it's blocking the entrance. And you've been here and apparently for hours. So, which means I can't go in, I can't, no, nobody can come out. It doesn't make sense. If they do it in your house, how would you feel? Hmm. My, guess what, guess what this lady did? Wow. Yes. Hmm. She went to and pick up some set of, I don't know, from bus station, police officers, two of them, yeah. to arrest 
to arrest me. Okay. I'm telling you. Uh, to arrest me for sort of uh, disagreement, yeah. Uh, exactly. So see, they arrested. And then me. the police. They, when the police came, what did they accuse you of? They, they said uh, I, I'm harassing. I'm threatening, and I'm I'm threatening her, and I'm harassing her. That that was what they were charging me for, and they picked me up. Little did they know well, they that you I, up. they didn't just come to say, well, "Let's go to the station." Like, they, well, they they did, but you have to, you know. I think apparently this one felt that. You know, since I was cooperating, so they were not really going that extreme. Right. So, but 